Hey everyone. So to kick us off with our first track, uh, Operating at Scale, we have our first talk by Vadim Rutkowski and Aditya Konarde about Cincinnati, a case study in SRE bootstrapping. So I'll just share my video uh, or, or share my screen for their talk. Hello everyone, my name is Aditya Konade. Uh, we'll wait for a few minutes to see if uh, they'll join in to give a live uh, discussion. But otherwise, I'll just continue playing uh, their talk. All right, so we have Aditya in the chat. So I'll just continue with the recording. You have all seen Red Hat's strategic imperative of delivering a hybrid cloud business model, including SaaS offerings across the portfolio. In this session, Red Hat's service delivery and over the updates team will walk through a worked example of how to bootstrap an application with a modern SIE based approach. Today, we will discuss Cincinnati, which is also known as the OpenShift update service. Along with that, we will take a look at how we can develop a cloud native service and how SRE's practices have boost bootstrap a service. Then we will look at how SRE and engineering collaborate to deliver the service. Finally, we'll, we'll also give you a sneak peek into our development workflows. Let's hand it over to Vadim to talk about Sensei. Um, Sensei is a short for the name of the project and the protocol called Cincinnati. Um, in the next slide, I'll describe what it is and what's that all about. Um, OpenShift Update Service, also known as Project Cincinnati, is ensuring that every connected OpenShift 4 cluster is able to upgrade between different versions. Uh, it's based on Cincinnati protocol, and which is a development from the CoreOS container Linux update protocol called Omaha. Um, OpenShift Update Service, also known as OSUS, is building upgrade graphs these are being consumed by OpenShift clusters, and um, OpenShift clusters are constantly sending requests to OSUS in order to figure out uh, a list of update versions available to them. This update service requires a high availability since all of the connected clusters are requesting it. Um, from development side, it's also stateless and it can be effortlessly scaled. Next slide, please. Uh, here is a diagram of how all things work together in order to make OpenShift update from one version to the other. Um, admin is able to list available options and uh, available versions on the console. Cluster is constantly requesting OpenShift update service and using the Cincinnati protocol it receives a list of versions available for upgrade. And once the upgrade begins, the cluster requests Quay.io container registry and fetches the update image and the upgrade starts. Next slide, please. Here is the timeline of how we started developing the service and started collaborating with Abyssary in order to achieve high availability. Um, it all began with the minimal viable product uh, called Cincinnati and development by Cincinnati Protocol. Uh, we have asked SRE to start managing two instances. One of them would be production and the other one would be stage. Um, we have collaborated to set up an out deploy of the latest master commits to stage. And later we started working on application level metrics related to uh, the level of requested updates, uh, number of errors, and other details. Uh, later, 
both instances had persistent logging set up. And um, SRE has developed a tool called SAS Herder in order to manage all the deployments to both stage and prod. Later, Cincinnati application itself has um, added a possibility to use open tracing, open telemetry, and um, and tools like Jager in order to inspect its, um, what's happening inside of it. Later, the Cincinnati pro project has been renamed has been renamed into OpenShift Update Service, or OSIS for short, in order not to be confused with the protocol. Next slide, please. Um, and our future plans and things that we're working on now is support for disconnected installations, which don't require runheads, also systems, uh, work related to uh, operating of the OSIS and helping customers with our experience in that using the Kubernetes operator to install losses, uh, support for open tracing on our production instances and helping our customers to uh, take use of that and work on uh, memory profiling and implementing it in our end-to-end -end tests. Next slide, please. Uh, here is how um, here is the work and how we collaborate with Apple 3 in order to achieve the stability and development of update service. Um, here are the tools and tricks that we use. Um, most of our day related to SRE is happening in Alert Manager channel. Uh, where all of the work related to stability for our instances is basically targeted around Alert. We treat every alert as an actionable item. We have to explain why this alert happened and how to prevent that from happening if it's a false alert or what needs to be fixed on, um, on either of the environments in case it's a valid issue. Uh, we use the following tools to, to help us with that. Uh, first of all would be Kibana and Elasticsearch to keep and visualize bugs of the pods which we're running. Um, on development, we use Jaeger to get insight onto uh, how a particular request from the customer has been treated by Cincinnati or OSIS. And we use OC inject tool to add debugging tools into the live pod without restarting it, so that we could use S-Trace, uh, debugger, and other tools which are not present in the uh, production containers. Um, we have worked with F3 to establish a small protocol, how we should collaborate, and that resulted into using a special interrupt catcher engineer who would be able to, to guide us and help us with the um, questions and issues which are able to resolve in our documentation. So that's been incredibly helpful. Next slide, please. Um, so during development, we're also thinking about how that would affect stage and prod instances. Uh, first of all, we have established end-to-end -end tests, and we require every pull request for Cincinnati to pass them. These tests are uh, focusing on verifying functionality of the service, but we also added uh, load tests, which ensure that SLOs, which were uh, we have agreed on um, supporting, those would not be breached by the change. Um, we're also working on improving and adding more end-to-end -end tests based on the experience the experience we get from alerts. Uh, so we add tests on known failure cases, and we're ensuring that the new features are covered by those tests and have their SLO requirements. Next slide, please. All of that work is based on feedback from both teams. So we have several loops of feedback set up. Um, for instance, stage environment always has the latest team deployed. So we can check how uh, the most recent code change has affected it. And engineering can uh, already give it a test. And we can 
find out which issues could potentially affect the product we would roll out. Um, every other week, we also gather on observability meetings where we discuss how to get more information about what's happening on our environment, how to improve observability, and uh, it helps us to get more feedback from different interested parties. Next slide, please. The SRE team provides the developer team a framework and a set of tools to enable them to de deliver the service faster. Let's take a look at some of these tools. The first thing to remember here is that the SRE team is customer number one for OpenShift. We consume OpenShift dedicated and run our services on top of OpenShift dedicated. As a res result, we also have 24 7 365 incident response and use GitOps tooling like App Interface, which is also an open source project created by the SRE team to deliver the services. We have other tooling like Manifest Bouncer, which we will take a look at in the upcoming slides. And we do static analysis. We also provide observability tooling and also have resulted in developing our own SLI, SLO framework, a bunch of CI CD tooling. Along with that, we have soft meetings like regular checkpoints with services to ensure that they are following the current best practices, which are not enforced by our GitOps tooling. And also that provides us feedback in, as to what improvements we need with our tooling. We also collaborate with the service development teams on feature requests for our own tooling. And we also collaborate with upstream and downstream projects to be the feedback loop and contribute, contribute the features upstream where possible. Here's a list of some of the integrations or automation that we wrote as part of feature requests from the service teams or to fulfill our own requirements. All of these projects are available on GitHub in the link provided. One good example I would like to talk about is how Cincinnati drove the work around our SLOs. First of all, Red Hat as a company or service delivery as an organization needed to decide our own approach and vernacular for SLOs, SLIs, and SLAs. We then started implementing SLA and SLO tracking schema in App Interface, which is our centralized GitOps repository. The SLO Lipsonet library started by Matthias Leibel upstream helped us uh, with a framework on how we could do a GitOps based generative approach to SLIs and SLOs using Prometheus and Prometheus operator. We took that and developed our own framework, after which we mandated all of our components to register an SLO with the app interface repository. We got some early feedback and we had a, another quick revision and right now it's at revision two, at which point we felt like we wanted a service to go through this with us, where Cincinnati kindly volunteered and we started working with the Cincinnati team on getting the performance parameters added to the app interface. This led to a ton of other work, such as load testing and figuring out SLIs for Cincinnati, along with improvements to the metric system. Finally, we added the performance parameters for Cincinnati and App SRE's own applications. And the end result was that we have a prototype Cincinnati Valley dashboard, which we will take a look at during the demos. Nothing is possible without the collaboration between engineering and SRE. The whole idea of SRE is that engineers talk to SREs and they work together and combine their skills to deliver a service. Let's take a look at some of these initiatives that we have. First of all, like Vadim mentioned a few slides ago, we have a managed services observability working group where interested services and tenants can come together with the monitoring engineering group and the SRE group. And we all together discuss what improvements can be made to our observability tooling. Observability is the base in the hierarchy of needs for SRE and continuously improving that is our goal. App team also collaborates and consults on SRE practices with the teams regularly 
and on a per need basis. We also do capacity planning with the teams so that we always know what's coming and we are closely in the loop with the teams on upcoming product releases or upcoming traffic spikes that are expected. Along with that, alerts are only good when they are tested. So we also do fire drills and simulated outages that keeps us on our toes. And we have enhancements to the SRE tooling and those benefit multiple teams because they are a shared framework. Let's look at what a perfect deployment looks like for us. A standard tooling saves developers from all this overhead. And without the SRE team, a development team would necessarily have to either crash their application and realize this afterwards or develop this tooling by themselves. So Manifest Bouncer, which I previously mentioned, is a best practice tooling for deployments on Kubernetes. And with this Manifest Bouncer gating check, we ensure that all of our deployments that are getting through to production are of the highest quality possible. SRE also has some standard patterns like multi-AZ, ensuring pod disruption budgets and anti-affinity for pods uh, for HA, and some Kubernetes specifics such as enforcing the update strategy, readiness probe, liveness probes, limits and requests, and all of them being up to the mark. We also check for deprecated API endpoints, deprecated objects, and manage other CI and CD workflows to standardize across teams and across services, and provide improvements across the boards. On this slide, I will describe which work has been done to improve Cincinnati based on the experience gained from the SRE team. Um, initially, we had an extensive list of alerts and situations which we would like to track, but uh, a lot of them have been triggered for no reason, and that caused an alert fatigue. So the first thing we did was minimize the list of alerts and left only the ones which are showing that our service is in catastrophic state. After that work has been done, we have added upstream checks uh, to ensure that SLOs are not broken uh, when the change is proposed. That helps us to avoid a few performance regression. We also performed uh, capacity planning for Cincinnati, and that resulted in several performance fixes. Um, after that, the load test documentation has been created so that other developers of Cincinnati and SRE uh, would know about which um, parts of load tests are important and how it has been performed. We worked with SRE and extended the brand address definition file so that um, folks from other team could have a look about which performance parameter is critical for Cincinnati. Um, after that, we worked on zero downtime upgrades for the Cincinnati service and have created a special dashboard for to show the SLOs and the current state of Cincinnati using app interface provided by S3. Uh, the result of that has been um, work to ensure that no change can break uh, our experience with app three team. Next slide, please. Uh, the first focus and the first phase where we started working was ensuring that app-specific metrics have been added to Cincinnati. Now, uh, we worked on integrating into the OpenShift router and ensure that the metrics from that router, meaning that's exactly what the customer would experience, are being tracked and are part of the SLOs. And meanwhile, we have been helping the SRE to work on SLO library and added load testing and capacity planning into the framework and have defined it as a requirement for Cincinnati deployments. 
Next slide, please. After that, we tried to visualize um, and report more on the details of Cincinnati. So we have created a dashboard for our SLO, which we will show during the demo. Next slide, please. Um, one of the biggest improvements during the capacity analysis has been a pull request which has increased uh, performance between two different components of Cincinnati. And that increase has been uh, 50 times more thanks to the analysis held by the SRE team. This issue has been identified during initial stages and later on we added a special test which ensures that this uh, performance hasn't decreased since then. Next slide, please. Um, we worked a lot to avoid false positives. And now, on, whenever an alert happens, we e either uh, fix the underlying issue or work with the SRE team to improve the alerting so that we would exclude the false positives. Um, all of the alerts are defined in upstream Cincinnati repo, so we work on them independently. And um, every deployment automatically applies those upstream alerts. Um, we're trying to, to do our best not to worry the SRE team without reason and try to triage the upcoming alerts ourselves. That also helps us to improve the knowledge of how the service would act um, on its own. Uh, we also work with SRE to make sure that they understand the alerts as well. So we're trying to document them and involve SRE folks whenever we add a new alert. Next slide, please. So now that we have seen how, how a deployment for Cincinnati looks, let's take a look at that in production and let's take a look at some of the dashboards that we have. The first thing I would like to show you is our Cincinnati visual app interface representation. So as you can see, the app interface repository being a GitHub repository needs to be visualized in a nicer way. So we have this tooling called the visual app interface, which GraphQL queries the app interface servers and displays a nicer visual representation of the YAML files that are in the app interface. Here we can see the Cincinnati application file. It provides useful information for the SREs at a glance, such as the description of the service, a Grafana dashboard, what the service SLO is, what the contact points are, and what the dependencies and uh, direct links to production are. I would leave out the links to production here, but you can see that Cincinnati production and Cincinnati stage are working on two different clusters, and we have direct links as the SRE team to these clusters. And that helps SRE to quickly access any of the services when needed. The next tooling I would like to describe is the Cincinnati Valley dashboard. This Valley dashboard is based on the metrics that are created from the SLI SLO framework and also based on SLO lips on it. So they are following the SRE book best practices of multi vendor, multi array, and one rate alerts. Also, we have the availability errors, volume of requests, and latency at a glance so that SREs can quickly triage the health of a particular service. We follow the common pattern across all services so that it is standardized and we are all speaking the same language. We have some additional screenshots here around the Cincinnati Ballet dashboard. We also have sometimes uh, service specific dashboards that allow us to dive deeper into the service specifics. And I think that's it. So please let us know in the chat or wherever if you have any questions. All right, so that was Aditya and Valin for Cincinnati um, 
the case study in SRE bootstrapping. So if you have any questions, please feel free to enter in the chat. And I think other, we have Aditi in the chat, so he'll go through and answer all of your questions.